between six and eight litter boxes. Oh, All right, yes. hello, this is Rich. Um, today, I just want to show you a little bit of update and my source code uh, and this uh, procedural object placement system will be up with my YouTube video. Sorry about that, guys. I just had a couple of things I needed to fix um, and add for features and stuff. It, it's not 100% perfect. <clears throat> there is one feature that does not work. Um, but you can just um, skip around that. It doesn't work as of right now. Um, but I'm going to show you some new features here and just a little bit of more of the extensibility if you guys don't quite understand how useful this system is. As you can see, I'm in a new environment that I created uh, just really quickly here. Um, and um, so what I'm going to do is you can see I have my uh, procedure object placement uh, entity in the level here in this little um, area with houses, be little huts surrounding. And I'm going to show you a little bit of wh why this system is so great and it's just going to get better with time. And if you use your imagination, it's just going to serve you well. My goal is, and this is going to sound weird or impossible, or whatever. But my goal is, is not to replace, you know, our, our level designers and game designers and stuff and stuff of that nature, but to make it extremely easy if you so choose. Now there used to be a joke going around saying, you know, let's make a make a button, uh, make a uh, you know, click a button to make a video game. You know, make a great game button. You just click it and everything works beautifully, makes the whole game for you. Bam. Well, obviously that's not what I'm going to do. But what I do plan to do is make my system so extensible and so easy to use that you basically place these entities all over the world, specify what entities you want to place, how you want to place it, and actually build your entire level without any user-placed uh, user pieces and have it be so realistic that it would be as good as somebody who actually artistically went in there and placed these objects. So. This is a, it's used as a layer building system. You place, uh, randomly generate objects randomly uh, throughout the map that you specify uh, with inside these volumes. On top of that, you then take those existing procedurally generated objects. In this case, I have none. But you take those procedurally generated objects that you've uh, generated in your level. Then you can specify with the same volume um, what other objects you want to place on top of those objects that you had. And then you can also place other objects on top of those objects that you have in a sensible manner. Now, you, uh, this was previously all uh, randomly generated, but I've actually added a cool feature that allows you to specify in your 3D modeling package where to place these objects if you so choose. So it's not so ram random and it makes sense. Now, let me explain. I have a random generation feature which will go ahead and randomly uh, place certain types that you specify. If I have 10 different types of models, um, all of the same type, and I specify I want to specify, you know, place that type of object. It'll randomly go through and uh, gather all those different types of objects of the same type and then randomly place them throughout the volume. That's a random type of placement for procedure generation. But I also have a new feature which I'm showcasing today, which will allow you to place other objects on top of only the other objects that you specify and in predefined positions that you set up in the modeling package. So I'm going to go ahead and, for instance, what I'm going to show you today is I'm going to place uh, two tables with inside this volume with my procedural system. And then I'm going to go ahead and place plates on top of these tables procedurally. And then I'm going to go ahead and place apples on top of these plates or near the plates as if the person was eating apples and set it beside the plate or has a half apple on top of the plate. And then I'm going to place spoons on top of the plate or beside the plate, depending. Now this is a lot of work to do, but I just want to show you how procedurally you can get this. For instance, an idea could be you could spawn uh, randomly generate uh, houses throughout your map, and then you can actually place beds all inside those houses automatically. Then you can place sheets on top of those beds if you want to, and then pillows on top of the sheets. All procedural, so you can have the whole level made uh, by layering on top of my procedural system. And this is all. This can all be achieved already with this uh, using object helpers uh, method. So let's go ahead and make sure I select my procedural objects entity uh, procedure optic placer go to the procedural tab you're gonna know I have a couple of new features generate on types only but mainly we have generate on types only and use object helpers checkbox now I'm gonna go over those we also have a mass now because uh, with this mass tab you can either make the objects you place static as in they're not physicalized they don't physicalize as a rigid body if you collide into them they're not gonna move or whatever that's good if you want static objects that don't move um, you would set this, up, this uh, value to zero and then generate your object. So they're, they're going to be physicalized, they're going to detect collision, but they're not going to be moved like a rigid body. They're going to be static, okay? 
And then if you set this uh, value higher than zero, any value higher than zero, the object's going to be physicalized as a rigid body and have the mass of what you specify. So you can make them static or dynamic uh, by setting the mass greater than zero or setting it to zero for static objects. Number of objects is uh, roughly the number of objects that you want the procedural uh, generation system to generate. Procedural folder is obviously where uh, the user-defined folder that all your procedural objects are actually kept. In this case, mine's uh, d kept in game, my files, objects, procedural, placement. Those are all my objects. Procedural objects, this is uh, after you define the types that you want to place. You can actually go in and specify individual models that you only want to place. So you can only, uh, you have maybe have a lot of types of objects that you, you maybe have a type of object you want to place, but there are certain models of that type that you know won't fit or look good. So you can go ahead and specify exactly what models you actually want to place of that type. Uh, radius is obviously the radius of this volume. The height is the radius of the volume. We also have random rotation, which works, but not fully. Random rotation currently works for uh, procedurally gen generating objects randomly when you're not using uh, predefined positions for object helpers. Uh, it doesn't work for when you uh, predefine uh, positions to place things. Types allowed is obviously the types of of objects that you want to generate with inside this volume. Types to place on is when you have the generate on types only checkbox checks. It will only place the uh, types allowed objects on top of the specific types of objects you want to place on. For even more control and use object helpers is going to actually use the positions of the dummy helpers in the 3 Studio Max package or 3D package that you choose of your choice. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. First of all, I'm not going to be using using object helpers. I'm not going to be using on generate on types only. I'm going to go through the first pass, what I call the first pass, uh, which will randomly generate uh, things on top of the terrain or any type of object, uh, to be honest with you. So let's go ahead and click on generate. <clears throat> um, we're going to make these uh, dynamic objects, rigid bodies. So we're going to have a massive uh, a table. I'm going to say I'm going to give it um, 20 pounds. This is in kilograms and roughly in pounds it's half the kilograms so 40 kilograms equals 20 pounds roughly. So I want these tables to be uh, physicalized as a rigid body and be 40 kilograms. Number of objects, I only want to place two in this volume. Um, radius is fine. Random rotation, yes I want to make these objects randomly rotated. Um, types allowed. Um, we're going to generate tables, so STD tables, and make sure we delimit it with a uh, comma, STD table. Types to place on. Um, if you don't have the generate on types checked, like this is not checked, you can still have stuff here, it just won't be taken into account. But I just like to delete it anyways. And we're not going to be using object helpers. So we got two objects being placed inside this volume that are going to be uh, physicalized as rigid bodies with the weight of 40 kilograms. And they're going to have random rotation. Ready? Awesome. So here we go. I have two objects. Now I have a table here that's placed inside the volume. And let's just make our way over to here. And we have another object that's placed inside. So we have two tables that have random rotation. Um, okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do our second pass. I like to call it a second pass. And uh, we're going to make sure we generate on types only. Now, when you ch this is the uh, glitch that doesn't work currently. Uh, when you generate on types only, the only option you can do it with is if you also have the use object helpers. So generate on types on only works when you have use object helpers as well. So generate on types only, we're going to be using the object helpers. And uh, we're going to physicalize some plates. We're going to put some plates on these tables randomly. So we're going to go ahead and uh, give these a mass of two, which will effectively give them a one pound weight for each uh, plate. Number of objects. I'm going to go ahead and create six, roughly three per table. Uh, it's, it's procedurally generated at random, so you may get four plates on one, two plates on the other. But typically, it's three plates per table. We're going to uncheck random rotation because we have the generate on types only. Random rotation does not work with it. Um, types allowed. What types do we want to uh, generate? Well, I have a type that's already made in my 3D package called STD plate, standard plate. Okay. And uh, types to place on. We obviously want to place it on, oops, obviously want to place it on the types of table. So I'm going to place types of plate on type of table. So these plates will only be generated on tables of type table. We're going to be using our object helpers, fine, fine, let's go ahead and generate. Okay, all done. So we're going to come right into the plates. You're going to see that these are placed meaningfully. They're not just randomly placed all around the objects. It actually is in a position that actually looks like it would be if you were eating at a table. We have one, 
two, three, four, five, six. So we have six plates that we generated only on tables. As you can see, there's no plates anywhere else. And they're placed in a meaningful fashion, okay? They're not just randomly rotated. It doesn't make sense. This makes sense that plates would be placed there. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. So now let's go ahead and do our, you know, third pass. I like to call this my third pass. And it's unlimited as you want. So we're going to make sure we generate on types only and use object helpers as well. And what type of objects do we want to uh, allow? Well, I have a type called Apple, A-P-P-L-E. So I'm going to uh, allow types of apples to be generated. And what I want to generate it on, I want to generate it on plates, my STD plates, standard plates. So we're going to generate about six apples on uh, plates, only plates. And we're going to be using object helpers. So let's go ahead and reload the scripts. You're going to notice that this person happens to have two apples. He's kind of a fat boy. Um, we have over here another plate. He's sitting over here and he went ahead and he um, put his um, apple, you know, right on the side. He was eating it. So that's uh, one, two, three apples. And let's go over here. This guy put two on his plate over here at that position. And this guy over here put his plate right below, uh, his apple right below. So we have six apples generated on plates. This guy is all done his food, doesn't have anything left. Pretty damn cool. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and do our fourth pass. And uh, we're going to go ahead and generate uh, a type that I created. S P O O. And keep in mind, I'm not a artistic type of person. I'm a programmer. I well, I consider myself a programmer. And uh, things may not be 100% perfect in the art department. But um, we're going to generate some spoons. And uh, what are we going to generate spoons on? Uh, also, we're going to generate some spoons on top of the plate. So we're going to generate objects of type spoon. Uh, we're going to generate six objects of the type spoon. And they're going to be placed only on our plates type. So let's go ahead and uh, reload our scripts again. This guy uh, happens to have uh, one spoon Oops. on his plate here. It's kind of hard to see with the lighting, but he has one spoon on top of his plate. This guy has a spoon set up right on his plate right over here. Uh, this guy also has a spoon set up right on top of his plate. He's all done his food on his plate. He set it right on top. Let's go over here to this area. He went ahead and he set a spoon on top of here. Okay. This guy has two spoons. He's a greedy motherfucker. So he's a spoon here and a spoon here. Um, this guy has <laughs> this guy has nothing. I feel bad for this guy. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and generate some more apples. <laughs> guy ain't got no food at all, Crystal. Jesus, this guy's gonna go without. Yeah, this guy is fucking easy. These guys are hungry. Yo, share the love. Please. Oh my god, this guy ain't getting shit. I feel bad for him. Alright, let's keep going. You gotta be fucking kidding. Oh, that's why. Uh, that's crazy. This guy ain't getting shit. Um... Let's generate some spoons, okay? Oh, this guy ain't getting shit. Anyways, this guy's going without food tonight, guys. But um, let me show you how this works, actually. Let me go ahead and uh, turn on my helpers uh, preview. Um, hmm, weird. So, tools, view, show console. And let's put the console down here. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, E underscore debug draw. And let's go ahead and turn on 15 so that we could view our helpers. Yeah, I know there's a lot of helpers everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. For the vegetation to allow uh, bending. But anyways, let's look at this. Look at this empty plate right here. First of all, this plate has a couple of helpers. Helper here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This plate has seven helpers. Okay? Seven helpers. 
uh, that was set up in the 3D modeling package. As you can see, that these objects are generated on top of these helpers. Now each table has six helpers. Helper here, helper here, helper here, helper here, helper here. Okay, each table has six helpers that tell it where to place these things. So that's easy. In the 3D package, you uh, set up these helpers that are named proc position underscore one, proc position underscore two, proc position underscore three, and this, you can have an unlimited amount of helpers. Um, so here we go. This is what it looks like. Very, very simple. And you can see how the system can be used. I could generate a, hel a house all procedurally across the terrain. Then I can put uh, beds inside of the houses. Then I can put sheets on top of the beds. Then I could put a, a nightstand beside the bed. And I can, you know, on and on and on. The imagination is what drives this thing. Anything you can imagine, you can create with my procedural system in terms of uh, layering objects on top of objects. And eventually, you could have a, you know, enough enough thing to make it look semi-realistic. Obviously, an automated system is never going to be good enough um, as an actual human person going in there placing these things. That's why in the future, currently, right now, these objects are not selectable. I cannot select these objects. I cannot edit their properties um, at all. Um, and if I even if I save the uh, editor, close it, these objects will not be here when I reopen. That is something that needs to be fixed in the future. Um, which will be uh, fixed and also that's why my procedural system eventually will allow you to go ahead and re after you've procedurally generated it all if you find something out of place you can actually select the object and modify it move it and stuff like that so you can actually get the thing you want this tool i developed to, for my rpg game to uh, rapidly increase the uh, iteration speed of, of making my levels and in games um, but I also, uh, it just makes it a lot easier. I can actually go in after and uh, modify these objects if I don't like the position. This tool is not to replace an artist, but it is to aid in the ability of speeding the process up. So thank you guys very much. I hope you appreciate it. My source code will be up with this video. Um, if you guys have any questions on how to use my system, how to make assets for it, let me know. Uh, there will be a couple tutorials will be up to show you completely how to take advantage of this system. And uh, thank you guys very much, and I hope you enjoy. Please download this system to check it out for yourself. You will need to you will need to compile it in C before you use it. Um, if not, I'll include my 64 bit, uh, 64 bit uh, Crygame DLL so that way you don't have to compile compile. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Bye.